Good morning. In addition to our mass intentions, let us also remember our first and frontline responders, our local faith communities, family, and friends. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My sisters and brothers, gathered this day to give thanks and praise to Almighty God. Let us once again open our minds and hearts to his ongoing call to mercy, healing, and compassion. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, you make your power known as you offer pardon and show mercy. Bless us with your grace and make those who hasten to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, he who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel. Is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave him the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you do not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. We quite often change our minds out of sense of compassion, solidarity, regret, guilt. There are many reasons we change our minds. Very rarely do we change our minds because God has asked us to, because we're not that keyed in on the Lord. Oh, we are today because it is the Lord's day. But what about Monday through Saturday? What about the dawn of each new day? Do we take at least 30 seconds of absolute quiet and silence to simply listen, not ask, not beg, not plead, not give the laundry list of what I need today? but just listen to what God has to say. And sometimes, like the two sons in the gospel today, our responses will be quite different. We'll give the knee-jerk reaction, uh, dude, I was out there Monday through Friday and it was hot and I'm tired. I just want to sit here. So no, I'm not going. But then he later regretted that and said, it's out of respect and love for my father that I do this. So it's a sense of sacrifice and dying to self in order to live for Christ and others. The second son is, of course, how most of us are, 99.9% of us. Yes, Lord, I'll get on that right away. You know, there was something I was supposed to do today. Oh, well, such is life. I had other things that were much more important to do. Monica and Augie, were told by their doctors they need to go on a diet. And after several months of saying, yep, 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 a little bit of overeating, we should do that. So they started walking on Saturday mornings and kind of watching what they ate. But every time they would take their walk, it would always take them past their favorite bakery. Oh. <laughs> and they would look in the window and say, oh, Augie's like, ah, they're jelly donuts calling my name. Monica would say, you know what? The Bavarian cream is calling my name. Let's keep walking. Let's keep walking. For several weeks, this went on, and they started to lose weight, and they're doing quite well, they thought. And so they said, you know, I don't think anyone would mind if we kind of cheated a little bit on our diet. Although, you know, probably should take that to prayer. Now, we know what the doctor says, we know what we feel, but let's take it to prayer and get some definitive answer. And each one of them only wanted two words. Augie, in the depths of his heart, wanted to hear jelly donut. Please, Lord, just a jelly donut, just, just one jelly donut. And I'll be good, I'll keep walking. And of course, Monica was, oh, please, Lord, in your gracious love and mercy, Bavarian cream, those are the only two words I want to hear in the depths of my heart. And they sat in profound silence and quiet. And ironically, they both heard carrot sticks. Really? 
Did you not, did you not hear jelly donut or Bavarian cream? Carrot sticks? A lot of times, what we want, and what we want God to say to us is what we want to hear. And it's not the way. Sometimes it is. Because our hearts have been set and focused on the Lord long before that. But sometimes it's something different. And doing the will of the Lord is the follow-up to hearing what God has to say to us. Jesus points out to the dismay, I'll be very polite and say the dismay of the chief priests and the elders, because they were probably really ticked off when he said the tax collectors, low on the totem pole, prostitutes even lower on the totem pole, not following the law and the regulations at all that we follow, are entering the kingdom of God before you. What, what, what? Well, that's not what we want to hear. Because you're not changing. You're seeing it, you're hearing it, you're experiencing it, and you're not doing anything about it. And that's the great challenge for anyone who follows Christ, for anyone who believes in God. That is the great challenge. To listen, take to heart what God says, and put it into action. Sometimes it's easy to simply say, I heard you, I got it, I believe it, thank you, have a nice day. Putting it into action, do you know what I'm, kind of resistance I'm going to get? Do you know what kind of flack and feedback I'm going to get today? Well, who's more important? God, co-workers, family, friends. There is a way to present in terms that the world will hear and be appreciative versus the hellfire and brimstone. That's kind of passe. People kind of, eh, fluff that off. What they want is a genuineness of faith, a lived expression of faith in the life of those who proclaim the word of God. And that's everyone who believes. We proclaim the word of God or don't by the simple way we live our lives every day. Doesn't mean we'll do it accurately or correctly or 100% all the time. We are a work in progress. But progress must also be our goal. A little bit more today than yesterday. I know it won't quite be as good as tomorrow. But always moving forward in the life of faith. Monica and Augie, well, they heard the words carrot sticks. They changed the pattern of their Saturday morning walks. Instead of going by the bakery, they walked across the street and walked in front of the produce market. So a change is not easy, but it can be accomplished. Listening to the word of God, keeping it and putting it into action is a great challenge, but one that also can be done. In the next month and several days, we're gonna hear a lot of words, a lot of rhetoric, a lot of this, a lot of that. If it gets to be overwhelming, turn it off. Or turn it off. Whatever symbol you want to use. And listen to the word of God. Make sure God is first, foremost, and always in your life. And when I say you, I mean me. Always foremost in our lives. Always present in the world by what we struggle to do in reflection by the example and an imitation of Jesus Christ. God's blessing be upon us all in the days ahead. United this day in voice and heart, and joining Catholics throughout the world with faith, hope, and confidence, we once again profess that which we truly believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, 
he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the Lord there is mercy and compassion. In faith, we offer our prayers of hope and petition this day. That the church, its leaders and people, may be filled with a genuine reverence for all life, working each day to respect, protect, and heal. We pray to the Lord. That leaders of nations and leaders of peoples will continue to genuinely promote and defend the presence of God and lived expression of faith throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. That those whose lives have been profoundly affected by recent and continuing wildfires may be renewed in strength by God's blessing, and that they may also find comfort and hope in our outreach of prayer and compassion. We pray to the Lord. That all first and frontline responders may be blessed with compassion and renewed by the grace of the Holy Spirit, as they strive to meet the needs of those they are called to serve, heal, and protect. We pray to the Lord. That those who have died may be forever blessed with the light, happiness, and peace of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. And for those prayers, hopes, and petitions we hold this day in the silence of our hearts, Merciful God, you always provide what is truly needed for the journey of life. Grateful for your presence among and within us, may we share each day your life, mercy, and compassion as healing and hope for the world. Through Christ our Lord. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, and the sacrifices of our own lives, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Merciful Lord, grant that our offering this day may be acceptable to you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be fully open to us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For it is in you that we live and move and have our very existence. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are indeed holy, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly ask, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit, in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul the Apostle, and with all the saints, 
on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Lord, may the sacrifice of all reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Francis, Gerald and Alberto, the bishops of this diocese, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayer of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, grant kind admittance into your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. United this day in voice and heart, and joining Christians throughout the world with faith, hope, and confidence, we once again echo the prayer of the Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church gathered here this day, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My sisters and brothers, for our world this day, for those who are near to us and dear to us, we offer a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ. My sisters and brothers, at this time I invite you to pray the prayer for a spiritual communion.
Let us pray. O Lord, may these sacred mysteries restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death. Through Christ our Lord. Announcements. As you have no doubt heard, Riverside County is opening. They're in moving from purple to red, whatever tier they're moving to or level, to reopen uh, churches indoors. Uh, however, uh, they are rewriting their own guidelines uh, in light of those. Bishop Barnes will be issuing new guidelines. So not in the parishes yet in Riverside County until they have the guidelines in their hot little hands, hopefully tomorrow, and we'll be able to put everything into place. We, however, are in San Bernardino County, and as yet we are still in the purple level, purple tier, and we have not progressed with the numbers as yet. So we are still outdoor masses. As far as I know, we're still gonna, whether it's outdoors, indoors, I think 100 or 25%, whichever is uh, lower, is going to be the, the same guideline. We hope and pray to get back to larger numbers, but you know, we are resilient people. As my father, God rest his soul, once said, you know, Michael, whether you're celebrating mass in St. Peter's Basilica, in our parish, or on the hood of a Jeep during World War II, it is the same God, the same Christ, and the same church that gathers. So wherever we gather, we are God's people. So patience and hope. The religious education classes will begin Monday, tomorrow, September 28th. Registrations are still being accepted until October 4th, and you may register online through the parish website. Immediately following this Mass, there's a brief announcement from our Diocesan Catholic Cemetery, and following on that will be Sister Sarah and our AV crew with a great, great children's liturgy. So please stay tuned for that. We want to thank you for your ongoing generosity, love, and support. Uh, your prayers certainly mean a lot to us these days. Please know of our prayers and support and love for all of you. Finally, it is ooh, about 9.35, 9.40, somewhere uh, real time, local time here. We are getting ready for the vehicle communion line and distribution of the Eucharist. There again, we simply remind you, it'll be from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Enter from uh, Boys Republic Drive into gate number one. You'll be guided through by ministers in the parking lot. Please slow down uh, before, during, and after you've received Eucharist. Some people are a little lead foot wanting to head out to, to Denny's for pickup or something, I don't know. But just be respectful and uh, watchful of all ministers who are out and about on the grounds. Also, obviously, if you've, you've received First Eucharist, uh, the guidelines still apply. One hour uh, fast before, so only water and medicine before receiving Eucharist. Uh, be in a state of grace. Da, 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 da. Let's see, you've participated, obviously, in this live stream mass, which we greatly appreciate. Um, -dum -dum. So there again, uh, no parking. You're simply coming through the line to receive Eucharist and then heading on the rest of your day. And there is no upper age limit. So if you meet all the above requirements, you're more than welcome to pop in, receive communion, or if you wish to receive a blessing, please uh, let us know as well. The Lord be with you. May the grace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, remaining with you now and forever. Our celebration is ended. Let us go forth each day to love and serve the Lord.